Professor Dave and Chegg here. As we expand our knowledge of chemistry into the realm of organic molecules, the first important class of molecules we will need to learn about are the alkanes, which are fully saturated hydrocarbons. Let's learn about these molecules now. As we mentioned, alkanes are hydrocarbons, which means they consist of hydrogen and carbon. Specifically, alkanes are fully saturated hydrocarbons. This means that they have maximum hydrogen content. All the carbons are sp3 hybridized and have single bonds between them so that they can also be bonded to as many hydrogen atoms as possible. This is different from unsaturated hydrocarbons, which have one or more double or triple bonds between the carbons, which reduces the hydrogen content. The simplest alkane is methane, CH4. With two carbons, we get ethane. With three, propane. Then butane, pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, nonane, and decane. These are important prefixes to know, as they tell us the number of carbons in the molecule, while the suffix ane tells us it's an alkane. These are examples of straight-chain alkanes, but we can also have branched alkanes. For example, instead of straight-chain butane, we could have isobutane. These are structural isomers, as they have the same formula, C4H10, but they differ in their connectivity. Pentane has three isomers. The more carbons there are in the molecule, the more isomers that are possible. When we name these different isomers, we need a systematic method for doing so. This will involve first identifying the longest chain. This is the backbone of the molecule, while the other carbon groups are called substituents. Whatever the length of the backbone, that gives us the parent name of the molecule. If five carbons, it's a pentane, and so forth. But we must also name the substituents. To do this, we have to number the main chain. There are two possible directions to do this, but we will number in the direction that will give the substituent occurring soonest. So here, this pentane molecule has what we would call a methyl group on carbon 2, since that's sooner than if we numbered the other way. Methyl utilizes the prefix meth, meaning one, and then a different suffix because it is acting as a substituent. So this is 2-methylpentane. We could also have 3-methylpentane if the methyl is on carbon 3. Sometimes there is more than one substituent. If they are the same kind, we name them together, specifying where they are and how many of them with the special prefix. So this is 2,3-dimethylbutane. This would be 2,2-dimethylbutane, since the methyls are both on carbon 2. So for any alkane, we identify the parent chain and number it, and then list any alkyl substituents in alphabetical order, with numbers designating their location on the main chain. Alkanes are fairly unreactive, but they nevertheless do undergo some different types of reactions. Alkanes can undergo combustion, which is why they are often used as fuels. They can also undergo substitution reactions, such as these where halogens are successively replacing hydrogen atoms. We should also be aware of cyclic alkanes, also called cycloalkanes. These use the same prefixes in terms of number of carbons, so this is cyclohexane. This is cyclopentane. These adopt interesting geometries due to the fact that each carbon will still be sp3 hybridized and promote tetrahedral geometry. There is a lot more to say about alkanes, but that is the domain of organic chemistry, so let's just continue to learn the basics about some other types of molecules. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.